Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. We're continuing to work with hypothesis testing with two populations. And in the past couple of sections, what we've done is learned how to handle it when, we, when we're uh, studying population means. We're doing hypothesis testing with means in the past sections, but we just had two populations. We're comparing two means between two different groups of people. Now in this section, we're gonna continue the trajectory that we kinda did in the past with basic hypothesis testing. First, you learn how to do it with means. Then you'll learn how to do it with proportions. So here we're going to do hypothesis testing with two proportions. So the analogy is very similar. It's going to be very similar to what we did when we did the hypothesis testing with one proportion. It's just that now we're going to have two populations of people and we'll have proportions in each of the populations and we'll sample this population here and then we'll sample that population over there. And the goal is, is the hypothesis, the claim, whatever it is we're testing, is going to be involving a comparison between two proportions. So don't forget what a proportion is. I always remind you of that. Um, a proportion is basically a percentage. It's very common to see that even on the news or in newspapers. It's something like 83% of all people like Pepsi or 27% of all people like Diet Coke or whatever. It's a percentage of a population. So obviously you would like to know how, how, what percentage of the whole population likes whatever it is you're talking about. But you can never go sample all million people. So what you do is you do a sample of the population and get the sample proportion. And in this case, since we'll have two proportions, we'll be sampling a different population and we'll be comparing those two uh, proportions together. All right, so just to kind of back up the truck a little bit, when we're doing this type of problem, we're doing hypothesis testing with two proportions, but there's some qualifiers on what we're going to uh, assume that we, uh, to be the case in these problems. The first thing is that these are going to be large uh, samples. Okay. Now, when we did this with means, I told you that large samples was just greater than 30. But when we're doing with proportions, there's a little more involved than that. I'll show you what constraint you need to use to make sure that we have a large enough samples to be able to, to, to use this method. Also, all of the sampling is going to be independent. Okay, we've talked about this before. Independent sampling just means that we, we don't have any overlap or connection between the two different sampling sets that we're doing. So we're studying uh, population A over here, we're studying population B over here, and they are separate people. They don't have, that we're not doing a before and after study of the same group of people. That's a different class of problem. We have separate groups of people, okay? And then of course we're doing it with proportions, which I told you already is a percentage of the population behaving a certain way. Now what does it mean to say we have large samples? Now if you remember, back when we did regular old hypothesis testing with proportions, I told you that you 